All right, what's up, guys? This is Vectone, and I'm bringing y'all uh, another tutorial video. This is going to be part two of uh, what I'm what I've been covering, and that's going to be how to run FL Studio as a VSTi inside of Ableton Live. Um, so, in the last video, we covered how to run it as a uh, VSTi uh, just by itself, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how to use the multi out plugin. So, if you watched the last video, you'll know that when you install FL Studio, it actually comes with two plugins. It's going to be one of them is VSTi and the other one is VSTi Multi. These can be located in your plugins folder, which is going to be right here in the category section. And if it doesn't show up there, you can go up to options, down to preferences, uh, file folder. And uh, I, I went over this in the last video, but you can set the custom VST plugin search folder. So Ableton will look in this folder for your plugin. I have it set to program files by 86 VST plugins, and that folder is usually automatically created, which is pretty convenient, so you can just set it to that. And make sure the actual plugins, the .dll files, are inside of here. Once you do that, you can just exit out, and it should appear. Now, the reason you see what I've got open is for recording purposes, but just you can go ahead and follow along and just have a open Ableton Live. And make sure you have your MIDI, uh, MIDI out channel right here, and you can make sure you have FL Studio Multi dragged into there. Now, when you do that, it's going to actually load up FL Studio. And uh, when uh, actually, in order to access that, you can double-click on the channel here, uh, go down to the settings, and it'll appear right here. You can click on this little wrench, and it'll show up here. And, and in order to actually open it, you can just click on this. And I had it open, so I click on it once to minimize it, and click on it again, and you'll see... It's actually open right here. Now when you open it, it's going to have all these instruments preloaded in here. And don't worry about that. Those just come like that it's just, uh, when you open it as a plugin. And uh, they're actually routed into your mixer already, which is kind of nice because the sounds aren't bad. But you can replace them with whatever you want. You can replace the plugin with anything you've got installed and make sure it's on the same channel. And uh, that, that'll be fine. Now, if you lo look at your master out here, you can see down at the bottom right of the mixer, we've got this little output section, and it's going to say FL1. If you click on that, you can see that it's got FL1 through 16. That is what the multi-out plugin is used for. It's got 16 outputs. Now, this is what actually enables you to route them to separate channels inside Ableton. Uh, so if you're going to do that, you need to make sure you've got your master channel here on one of the outputs. So you can go ahead and just leave that on one. Now, you can't put two on the same one, otherwise they're going to come through the same channels. So leave FL1 for the master output only. Um, now we can go to our any of our channels, and you'll see that on some of them, they don't have anything selected. These first two, I actually already changed uh, to two and three, because those are the next two channels in order. So I want this one to be on FL2, and this one's going to be on FL3. So if I actually uh, click on this, you may you may see it as like this. It'll say none. You can just click on that and set it to what you want. So now we have our two first instruments loaded up into FL Studio. They're all routed correctly in the mixer. We can go into Ableton Live, and uh, you can see that this is going to be a MIDI channel. I want to make sure y'all make sure that uh, it's a MIDI channel that you're using for the VST. For the instruments that you're loading, you're going to be using audio channels. Okay, so we have audio 4 and audio 5. These are for the two I made. I've got this one as my uh, basic, and this one is my square. They're already recording. That way you can just hear the sounds when I'm ready to play them. Uh, but for the audio from section, this is going to be the I.O. tab of your mixer. And if you don't know where that is, it's just right here, this little yellow button. You can click it, and it'll disappear or show up. So audio from, make sure you have it set to 1 FL Studio VSTi Multi. There's this other one, FL Studio, but don't, don't use that. Just use FL Studio VSTi Multi. Okay? For your uh, actual receiving audio, you're going to make sure it's on the same channel that you set it to. So these are going to be stereo channels. You can see FL2 left, FL2 right, and it's linked to VSTi Multi. So make sure you have that set on 2 for your first one. And three for your second one, because this is our what we set our other one to, FL3. So now these are going to be routed, and the instruments are routed in the mixer in FL Studio. They're in these two channels, and they're also coming through the master plug-in right here, and they're going through the master out in Ableton. So now when I actually play, let's go ahead and first look in FL Studio. Okay, we're going to select our basic instrument. Okay, you can see the audio is coming through. We can hear it. And it's coming through the master and its own basic channel. So you can add effects in here, up to 10 effects now. You can add all 10 
FL Studio effects, everything native to FL Studio, you can put in there, and it'll go through this master, and then this master will go all the way into this master, and this master will go into this master. But it'll all route into the individual channels as well. Uh, one other setting I want to make sure you guys know is that monitor needs to be on auto, and the audio needs to be going to the sins only, okay? You can't put it to the master because we've already got this going to the master. And remember, I just said the audio comes through here also. So if you have them both routed to the master, you're actually going to have two sounds layered on top of each other of the same thing. And that's just going to sound bad. I mean, it could sound good, but, you know, you really don't want that. So uh, just make sure you've got that uh, selected, okay? And uh, I've got this set to off. You could set this to auto um, if you want, but it's fine how it is. Uh, or however it, it is when you default loaded in. I think it's on auto, but that's okay. You can toy around with it and see what kind of effects you get. But as you can see now when I play the key, we've got input coming through the channel we set it to. And I, these sins are where your, your effects are. So... Like I said, the audio is going to the sins only, and the sins are the reverb and chorus. So you can add a, a variety of effects. You see I've got reverb here, chorus here, but I, I can add whatever I want into this channel, you know, just like you do in FL Studio. And you can put different effects, a different combination. But you need to make sure the effects go into the sin to channels. So now whenever I actually uh, play, I can hear... Okay, so that's pretty much exactly how you do it right there. Uh, as you can see, the effects are both in Ableton and in FL Studio. So you've got a host of effects. You've just got all these different things you can draw from to add to your song and add to your mix. And you can mix in two different mixers. There's all these sub-mixes you can break down into. Um, if you have any MIDI controllers that are specifically designed for Ableton, you can run FL Studio like this inside Ableton and use, like for example, I'm using the Launchpad Pro which is designed for Ableton. And so right now I'm using that to record this. But in FL Studio, I wouldn't have been able to do that because it's, the settings are rewired a little. They're just configured differently, and it doesn't work the same way as it does in Ableton. Uh, one other thing I want to say is that, uh, like I said earlier, um, I'm using Ableton Live Lite, and I said that in the last video also. And uh, the limitations of that are that I can only use two send channels, and I can only use eight mixer channels. So personally, for me, it really makes sense to use FL Studio, just regular VST inside Ableton. And then I can use the other seven for things I want inside Ableton, you know, like things that wouldn't be in FL Studio. I can put those onto the seven Ableton tracks and put everything I want in just one single FL Studio channel. However, if you have the higher version and you really do want to just all, you're really focused and it set on putting the effects from Ableton onto lots of different instruments in FL Studio, then obviously you can do this method and route everything separately. But really, it's it's your personal choice depending on what kind of setup you have and what you're trying to what your goals are. Um, so I hope this video helped. Oh, and I did have one final thing to say, and that's that uh, when it comes to MIDI controllers hooked up to your computer, you can't actually run them both in both uh, digital audio workstations. So if you have both of these open your MIDI instruments are going to go only to one of them at a time, not two. So I've got my Launchpad Pro, my audio interface, and my launch control all going to Ableton. Uh, but my keyboard I actually have in MIDI settings enabled up here. So if I go to MIDI settings in FL Studio, you can see I've got my Samsung Carbon 49, and it's enabled here. But in Ableton, you do the same thing. You go to Options, down to Preferences, and you can go to uh, Link MIDI. I've got the Carbon 49 disabled, so it's off on here. The reason I do that is because if you have the keyboard on in Ableton and you try to run FL Studio, uh, it'll respond to your keys. Like your, when you play keys, it'll play the basic note, the basic instrument, but that's it. You can't change anything because it, it's not set for FL Studio. So when you change in FL Studio, your keyboard is not responding to that. It's going to be responding to what you do in Ableton. So uh, that's, that's why I use the keyboard in FL Studio. I'm thinking there might be a way to actually, you know, change instruments inside Ableton, and then you can have everything, all your MIDI instruments in Ableton, but I haven't figured out how to do that, and if I do, I'll let you guys know. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope it helped y'all, and I hope you learned something, and if you have any questions, anything you want to, any advice you want to offer me, any tips about Ableton, pretty much anything, don't be afraid to ask me, and uh, thanks for uh, watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day.